Here's a question, can we reuse a custom amplifier rack from a previous project along with its wiring if we're just swapping out a couple of pieces of gear? In this video, we're gonna find out if this is a good or bad idea. We are also going to discuss the process for advanced aftermarket car audio system wiring and show all of the connections needed for this two amplifier system that includes a DSP system amplifier, along with explanations for why we have multiple fuse blocks. Hey everyone, I'm Mark. Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication. Here on this channel, we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. If you're new here, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Let's jump on in. So in just a second here, I wanna bring you guys up to speed with all of the existing wiring that we have on this amplifier rack. But first, I want to get the subwoofer amplifier mounted back in position. I was in the process of removing the existing digital signal processor and the two two-channel amps that were here before along with the subwoofer amplifier when I realized that since I intend to keep the same subwoofer amplifier, a lot of my layout here is going to be exactly the same. I'm essentially just adding another new amplifier that takes the place of that DSP and the two amplifiers that were here before over here. So I'm going to be able to reuse a lot of this existing wiring. These holes that you see here to mount the amplifiers are drilled and tapped. And in this case of the subwoofer amplifier, it's drilled and tapped for a 1024 screw. Before I mount it back in place, I do know that I want to do something different with the remote wire here that was daisy chained to the other amplifiers previously. I do need to change this so I'm going to unclip it by snipping all of the zip tie connections here and remove it from the board. Now on the subwoofer amplifier which is a JL Audio RD 1500-1 I do need to remove this cover plate that's going to give me access to the screws that tighten onto our power wires along with two of the four mounting positions that we need access to in order to attach this to the board. Now, because this wiring is already zip tied into place, it's just going to be a little bit easier for me to add the wire into the amplifier and then mount it in position. But normally you would want to mount your amplifiers and then do all of the wiring. We do have some new connections that we need to make for the speaker wiring since that will be a little bit different and we'll do that later in the process. Now, something I wanna mention while you're watching me do this here, because it's a comment that comes up quite often, this is not aluminum wire. This is in fact, fact, OFC oxygen-free copper wire, but it is tinned. That's why it has that silver color on the outside. Just remember guys, you can't judge wire based on how it looks because the CCA wire copper clad aluminum is in fact copper colored on the outside. Now I'm going to add those 1024 fasteners to mount this amplifier in position. And another quick note, I didn't use ferrules on the power wires there just because of the design of this amplifier, the way that it clamps on to the wire, it's not a set screw style terminal, so we're not going to use the ferrules here. With our subwoofer amplifier mounted back in position, let's go through a quick breakdown of everything that's going on here to bring you guys up to speed if you didn't watch that previous build series. So first of all, I've got a positive and a negative distribution block here. The positive is the one with the fuses, and it's going to have a connection that comes in here that's still in the vehicle right now. That's my main power lead connected straight to the battery. In contrast, you have the ground distribution here, the negative distribution block, and that's going to be connected to the ground of the vehicle with a wire right here. These distribution blocks are from our show sponsor, New Concepts, and what I really like about these is that you can use the same distribution blocks for both positive and ground. You just use these grounding links on the ground ones. These are super simple to use. You can see that they also have two inputs, which allows us to daisy chain more distribution blocks if we want, or in my case, I sent off some more power and ground to a separate smaller fuse block. Those two inputs there are zero gauge and then it has three four gauge outputs. If you guys wanna learn more about these, check out the links down in the video description. So as you can imagine previously, each of these three power leads went to our amplifiers and the same for the three ground connections here. In this case, I'm only going to have two amplifiers. So we are going to get rid of one set of these connections. Now let's talk a little bit more in detail about this smaller fuse distribution block here. The way that this is set up is, first of all, I've got a ground distribution block for some of the smaller ground wires, but then I also have a constant power. This is the constant 12 volt power because it's hooked directly to the same feed that's coming directly from the battery. So this is my constant side. And then I have a switched 12 volt side that is fed power via a 30 amp relay.
relay. Now in previous videos, oftentimes when I talk about relays, guys will say, hey, you don't need a relay if you're just doing a couple of amplifiers. And I agree with you. If you're just using a couple of amplifiers, you can easily turn on those amplifiers with the turn on source that comes from your aftermarket radio or even your factory system. That's because the current draw on this remote turn on circuit is very, very low. But that's not why I added this relay and this fuse distribution block. The reason I've added these is this allows me to add more switched circuits if I would like. Things like cooling fans, LED lights, this gives me the ability to add multiple different circuits if I so choose. So the relay here has that black wire that is a ground connection. It also has this red wire, which is a constant 12 volt connection. And then this white wire here, this is going to connect it to my turn on lead from the head unit. And it's going to tell my turn on side of this fuse block to turn on. Finally, there are some RCA signal wire connections that are still attached. I'm definitely going to have to undo these connections here as I don't need nearly as many RCAs. The reason I had so many previously is I had a digital signal processor over here. So that was fed signal from the head unit of the vehicle. And then it had its signal going out to the four channels of amplification that were here along with this one that led over to the subwoofer amplifier. But with our new setup here, there's going to be an eight channel amplifier with digital signal processor built in. And we are going to still need to send a signal out of that amplifier into our subwoofer amplifier. So we'll probably keep this wire here, but we're going to get rid of these other ones. So with those out of the way, we can turn our attention to this previous set of wires. Again, this went to the digital signal processor. It was a ground, a 12 volt constant, and the remote turn on, in this case, coming from this side of the circuit. I can remove all that because we're gonna be doing something a little bit different with our amplifier here. So let's get that out of the way as well. So now here is our main system amplifier that we're adding the JL Audio VX800 slash 8i. This is an eight channel amplifier. So we have eight channels of powered output for our speakers. And we also have the ability to send a DSP controlled RCA output to our subwoofer amplifier like we were talking about earlier. Let's get this opened up to start. I'm going to need the amplifier along with the couple of different wire harnesses. I was holding off on mounting the logo onto the amplifier here until I knew the orientation that it was going to be in, whether it was going to be in this here orientation or if it was going to be like this here. But what I've determined is it looks like if I mount the amplifier here, I'm going to be able to use some of the pre-existing powering wiring, which is great. So that's what we're going to go with. So let's get this logo stuck in place. To get the VX800 slash 8i amplifier mounted, I'm gonna be using some of these fasteners here. These are a number eight by 32 screw. These will fit into the slightly smaller screw holes that you see there. To do the mounting process, we have a couple of different tools we wanna to use. First of all, we wanna use a transfer punch. We can pick the correct size punch that goes nice and tight into this hole here. And obviously I have the point end sticking up right now. You would want the point end sticking down and you can give this a quick tap with a hammer and that's going to transfer the exact center of each of these holes to the amp rack. Once we do that, we can use our drill and tap kit here. I definitely recommend this kit for car audio applications. I'll put a link for you guys down in the video description, but we have the correct size drill bit here to drill our hole. And then we are going to tap it with the corresponding tap. Since we are using HDPE, you could also use ABS for our amp rack board. This is a good dense plastic that we can in fact drill and tap, which is going to give us threads that will allow us to use these machine fasteners to hold the amplifier in position. Before I go through that mounting process, Process, though, I do want to make sure that this power connector is going to line up with where I intend to mount the amplifier since, again, the wires are already mounted. So I want to get that power connector attached to the wires, but I also need to get some of these extra power wires out of the way again. So I've removed the smaller fuse block so that I can snip all of these zip ties, get rid of that extra power wiring. And then since I'm not going to need this connection on the fuse and ground distribution blocks anymore, I'm going to disconnect it. And while I'm at it, before I forget, I'm going to size up this fuse to an 80 amp fuse, which is sized for the new larger multi-channel amplifier. 
Now that I've marked, drilled, and tapped each of these mounting holes, I can add the mounting screw, and then the VXI amplifiers have this little screw cover that I can add above it. So our eight channel amp is now completely mounted. I've also secured the power wire and ground wire into this connector here. And you can see that I've also added the remote turn on leads. I've left myself more than enough length to daisy chain over to the subwoofer amplifier and I have just excess length here that's going to connect to my relay fuse block. When you're doing custom wiring work like this, it is easy to get stuck in the mode of trying to think like 12 steps ahead and make sure that you're planning everything properly. And I find that sometimes that can waste quite a bit of time. So just do what you know you need to do. In this case here, I might as well make this connection that is daisy chaining the remote turn on wire here, just because I know that that wire needs to be in this location. And even if this wasn't already drilled, if we were making a brand new amplifier rack, we could still knock that out and get that wire positioned in place. In this case, I'm going to use those existing holes to secure this wire. So now that I have the remote turn on lead that's daisy chained between the amplifiers completely attached and wired, I'm going to turn my attention to this connection harness here. So these are all the RCA signal wire inputs and outputs for the amplifier along with a couple of other connections. First off on this connection here, you can see that there is a valet wire and a remote wire. The valet wire is so that you can turn on a special valet mode that you set up in the DSP tuning software. That way, if you're taking your vehicle in for service, you could hide a little switch that activates this valet circuit and that way no one can abuse your system. You could also do something cool, like if you have a convertible, you could wire the switch that detects if the top is down into this mode to automatically switch tuning presets when you do have the top down on the vehicle. Now the remote wire could be used as a turn on output out of the amplifier. You can control it in the DSP software so that that output is activated on a time delay. So after a certain amount of time after this amplifier comes on, you would do something like that if you had turn on pop issues. In my case here, I'm not going to have those issues. So I've just got the two daisy chain together. Now the next part of this harness is right here. These are RCA pre outs. Like I've mentioned several times, we can control these pre outs to send signal to a separate amplifier that doesn't have a DSP built in. In our case here, I'm going to be using that to send signal to our subwoofer amplifier. And since we also have a control knob that's going to connect to this DSP amplifier, I'll be able to independently control the volume of the subwoofers via the software and that knob. Now, since this is an eight channel amplifier, there are eight channels of inputs here. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In my case, I'll just be using channels one and two th and three and four. That's going to be my front left and right and my rear left and right. Don't let that confuse you though. I will be using all eight channels of output out of the amplifier. But as an example, since I'll be using the inputs one and two for the front left and right speakers, that means that my channels one, two, three, and four, five, six will all be fed from this input signal and that's because up front I'm running an active three-way component system. So in other words in the DSP software I'll be connecting channels three and four which are my rear signals to the rear coaxial speakers which will be on channels seven and eight. So in terms of physically routing all of these different wires for my application here I'm going to need to make this connection over to the subwoofer amplifier I'm going to leave these two connections attached, but basically these are going to plug in once in the vehicle. And then these extra unused connections, I have this little 3D printed box here that I designed. These are available on my website if you guys would like to snag one. But this just allows me to cover up the unused wires from the VXI amplifier. All right, guys, so check it out. Now I've got all the RCA wires connected. So first of all, here again is that subwoofer RCA signal connection. I do want to point out that where I had the RCA connectors attached to each other, I did apply some heat shrink just to make sure that these always stay connected with each other. And everything is, of course, zip tied in position. That way it can't move. I've added the CAF wire caddy here. You can see that I've got it mounted with some 832 fasteners to my amp rack board. And the excess wiring that I'm not using is wired inside of there so it's nice and contained and looks really clean. Finally, the two sets of input channels that I am going to need to connect to the aftermarket stereo in the vehicle, I've got wired here. I might add another set of zip ties 
depending on how much flexibility I need on this little pigtail here once installed in the vehicle. But for now, I'm going to leave it like this. So now I need to get wired in these connections here. These are the eight channels of speaker power. So there's 16 connections. And actually, now that I think about it, there's really not that much to do here because I'm going to attach all of these wires permanently to the speaker wires that are installed in the vehicle. And I want this amplifier rack to be able to be easily serviced if need be taken in and out of the vehicle. So these plugs, the way they are designed, they are a quick connect plug just like that. I'm attaching and detaching four channels of amplified power. So what I'm thinking is, I think I'm just going to leave these loose and these can just be simply installed and connected once in the vehicle. As a quick side note, this is a separate amplifier rack that I worked on on another project for an Elantra. And what I did on this is I installed this plug on these. This particular amplifier is a five channel amplifier. The subwoofer output there goes into the subwoofer enclosure, but the other four channels of amplified power I have on this plug here. And the reason I did that in this case is because it allows me to tap into the factory speaker wiring, basically, I can have the factory speaker wiring connected here for signal and then amplified and sent back through the factory speaker wires of once amplified, or I can detach that system and the two mating plugs that go on these can just be connected to each other to power the existing stock system off of the stock head unit. Long story short, I just went with a different strategy on this one here, but these quick connect plugs are also an option. And if you guys wanna see that video, check out the related video up in the corner of the screen. Back to our amplifier rack here, there's really only two other connections that I need to make. One of the connections I need to do is for the controller that I mentioned earlier. Again, it's a quick disconnect plug, just like the speaker wires here. So I'm gonna leave that loose. That can just be easily connected in the vehicle, but I do need to connect the turn on circuit still, and I do need to get my smaller fuse block reinstalled. Here we have it guys. I now have the remote turn on lead connected to this side of the small fuse block. And I did make a change for the power and ground that feed this fuse block. They used to be wired over on this side here, but I decided that since I got rid of those other power wire connections for that additional amplifier, I was going to make this a little bit more clean and reuse those connections now to send the power and ground to this fuse block. So I've got those attached and rerouted there. So I'm reusing all of these spots that existed previously, and I've installed a new third amp fuse for that connection. With our cover plates all reinstalled, here we have it guys, the complete custom amplifier rack ready to be reinstalled into the vehicle. So overall for my application, I think it was a good idea to reuse that existing amp rack board. This saved me some material costs of the board itself, but also some fabrication time. And I was surprised how easily I was able to reuse many of the existing wire path holes. I really didn't have to make very many new ones. Now we have a ton more to do here on this custom build. So if you are new here, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and you guys can check out the full build playlist here on screen. Don't forget next time you need wiring and wiring accessories for a car audio build to check out our show sponsor new concepts you can learn more about them at the link down in the video description a big thanks to them along with jerry and the patreon membership team for making these videos possible and thank you for tuning in and watching